In today's video, I'm going to show you how to significantly increase your chances of passing practical completion. And this is really important because you might spend 12 months working on this project, you know, all the design, all the engineering, all the commissioning, all the project management, dealing with loads of dramas. And in most cases, trying to achieve impossible deadlines. And then after all this effort and work on the actual day, when the consultant comes to start to do witnessing, for those few hours, for that day or two days, when the consultant's gonna sort of, you know, run through your system and then make a call at the end of the day if you've you've met practical completion or you haven't met practical completion. And it's it's so important. And what I find most of the time is that, you know, BMS engineers or project managers will just roll into site at 9 a.m. on the day of witnessing, pretty much completely unprepared. And it just adds so much risk to the project. After all this work and this effort, you've spent a million dollars building this BMS, and now you're just gonna try and wing the witnessing session. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the things that a consultant needs to sign up practical completion, and how you can make their life easier. Because, because believe me that at the end of the job, when you know the BMS guys run out of money, and mechs run out of money, and the builders run out of money, you know, the consultants, we run out of money too. You know, I don't want to go down there and do three witnessing sessions. I don't have time for that. I'm busy and I don't have money for that. I want to go there, run to the BMS for four to six to eight hours and sign off at the end of the day and be done with it. So it's frustrating when we go to site and the BMS companies are not helping us to get sign off. So in this session, we're going to work through that. So I'm just gonna run through the witnessing part of this training manual. Uh, where is it? There it is, witnessing. So I've just selected a few points to run through here. We're not gonna run through every single thing. The first thing is point-to-point -point commissioning sheets. Now I've sort of spoken about this before, but you are not gonna get practical completion if you don't have your commissioning sheets ready. So a week before, in fact, actually, every time you do a, a catch up with your guys on site, the commissioning guys, just make sure they're filling in the commissioning sheets. Where's the folder? How are you going with that? Why aren't these points done? Okay, go back to that plant room and double check them. Maybe those points are now available. On the day of the witnessing, if you can, print them out into a manual and put it on the table there. It gives you guys a lot of authority when the commission sheets are there, printed out, and you're not trying to hide anything. The consultant can see that, and they can get a good feeling about where the project's at. I've got HLI commissioning sheets there, something that we don't normally do. And I guess we've been sort of letting it slide because it's quite difficult to provide HLI commissioning sheets. You've got a generator interface. There's 100 points there. Um, you know, the generator guy isn't there when you're there. The generators aren't running when you're there. You might be like clicking through you know, a PLC um, touch screen to try and check a few points. But nowadays, we are seeing more and more situations where, and actually last week I was witnessing a job where we've got fully packaged air hand units with controls, we've got VRF indoor fan call units, and we have all of our occupancy statuses coming through the lighting control system. So the whole thing has been integrated. Um, so we need to have some sheets to show that you have checked the occupancy points from the lighting control interface, and you've checked all the points on these packaged air hand units. If you're witnessing in a plant room, bring a monitor or two that day to site in your car and make sure there are chairs and tables available. Get the builder to help you with that. It's very frustrating when there's five people attending a witness session and we're all trying to look over someone's shoulder at a laptop. Everyone's thinking, these guys haven't thought this through and it's embarrassing. So just think about how you're gonna present that. Be professional like have the project manager introduce the day and then hand over to the engineer. And that part actually leads into this little one over here. Be confident and talk a lot. When you walk through plant rooms, briefly explain the mechanical systems, like proactively walk over to your control panel and open it. Show them inside there, you know, point out your instrumentation, your valve actuators, damper actuators, some sensors, you know, Take the lead of the session and talk through things. It's difficult when the BMS engineer is slightly a bit shy or intimidated by the 
people that are in the room and they just don't want to talk and then what happens is the consultant starts leading the day and you don't want that you don't want me to walk in there and start driving the session and walking around everyone's following me you want to lead everybody around and let me follow you this is very important get to site early and prepare get there two hours before go and sign out all the keys the swap passes Walk to the plant rooms, make sure all the systems are running, all your AHUs are running, the chillers and boilers are running. Check that the mech board handoff order switches are in the auto position and the VSD keypads are in auto because on every single job now, we're doing BMS witnessing straight after air and water balancing and everything's in manual, so nothing really works. So you're trying to do chiller staging and boiler staging or try to do AHU stuff and the dampers aren't working because everything's in manual. So just take the time to walk through and make sure everything's ready. And that last point, walk the route to make sure everything is still open. It's annoying when you walk through plant rooms and you get to an area and you're blocked. So maybe they're painting a plant room floor or um, the stair pressurization is being tested in the stairwells, the doors are locked. So walk the route, know exactly where you're gonna take them so you can be sure that you know on that route, all the control panels are clean, everything's sorted, there's no cables hanging out or and there's all crap all over the place. If I was you, I would consider being open and honest about stuff that hasn't been done yet. Because honesty builds trust. If the consultant had to find things that are not working, it's embarrassing for everybody and it just introduces doubt that this job isn't where it needs to be. So if your network controller in the basement for some strange reason failed this morning, Tell the consultant, so listen here, we had the car park ventilation systems running yesterday, but we think electrical is doing some testing in the basement and they've turned a the circuit breaker off. We've lost power to our network controller. So we, we won't check that. Um, we'll come back to it in a few hours later on the day. Just be honest about it. A, a really important thing here is that when the consultant walks away from site, you don't want them to be thinking, you know, those guys were not organized. Um, didn't have the commissioning sheets there. They didn't have the owner manual, a draft ready for me to look at. We walked around, the control panels were a mess. You know, we found lots of graphics offline, things weren't working. Like, you're not gonna get practical completion. They're gonna feel uncomfortable about that. And they're probably gonna ask for a second witnessing session another week or so. So just planning, you know, a lot of the times I'll be doing witnessing and there'll be, there'll be problems for sure. That's just the nature of the business. But if I think that they've done a good job, it's mostly commissioned, they're organized, and I feel good about it, I'm more likely to take a chance and just sign off practical completion. A lot of us got into this industry because we love the nuts and bolts of what we do. You know, we love opening up a box and getting a controller out, powering it up, writing software and learning new things and building database and alarms and graphics and trends. And like, there's nothing more satisfying than walking through a plant room and the chillers are running and the pumps are running and you've got dampers and sensors. You just know that all that, you know, a thousand bits of information, a thousand points, you know, you integrate them all into a system and it's all working. It's very satisfying to us. And even just walking through a plant room with a laptop as your tool, you know, you, you feel proud. You've got guys there carrying ladders and, you know, heavy power tools, you know, big wrenches and things, you know, we're smart guys. But it is important that you realize that the nuts and bolts of what we do, all that software stuff, for sure it's important, but it's not gonna make or break a project or the business you're working for, or the industry. You know, your, your career will only get so far with, you know, the technical side of things. And like, don't get me wrong, like we need good, like software guys. We need those sort of people. But nowadays with the complexity of projects and the compression of programs, that's not good enough anymore. Like that was good enough 20 years ago. It's too complex now. So we need everybody to be thinking about planning risk mitigation and a bit of management not just project managers if you're a software programmer or a design engineer or a commissioning technician you've got your core work to do but you have got to be looking ahead two weeks you know two months thinking about what's coming up what's going to bugger you up what's going to cause the project problems and planning for it um, and that's going to make a difference between you know differentiating yourself from you know other companies and even your own colleagues you know it's a bit of a competition out there we all, we all want to be the best and I can promise you now that for myself, I worked for 15 years for BMS companies across three countries. You know, I thought I was the smartest guy on earth. 
And then I went into the last six month, uh, last six years, I've been doing consulting work and, you know, reviewing every single BMS company's designs, signing off. I do BMS sign off almost every week. I do, uh, next week I'm doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, witnessing on a big construction job. Last week I did one, one half day uh, witnessing. And I'm looking at all these things and I can tell you, you guys are good at nuts and bolts, but generally we are not good at thinking about what does the consultant need? Is it different to what I need? Um, and, and working with them to achieve these outcomes. Um, it just does not make any sense if you do work flat out for 12 months, achieving amazing milestones, and at the end, at witnessing, you just wing it. It just does not make sense. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, the usual story, please like and subscribe, leave some comments, uh, and I will catch you next time.